The arrowhead emblem of the National Park Service, words read Mount Rainier National Park. In the front, a lake, surrounding the shallow expanse of water, gentle grassy slopes covered in a smattering of snow. In the back, a rocky peak. Through water, a northwestern salamander swims. In the water, perched on a bed of silt, a cascade's frog remains motionless. Across the surface of the lake, a water strider darts. A woman and a man wade into the lake. The man carries a square net, the woman holds paperwork. Caption Scott Anderson, biological technician. Uh, my name's Scott Anderson, and uh, I work for Mount Rainier National Park, and I'm a biological science technician. Basically, we monitor amphibians with a focus on the western toad, and uh, so that's an annual thing that we do in the summer. You know, so they're fairly common throughout Washington, the parts where they occur, but um, there is work that suggests that they have declined, like in the lowlands uh, of western Washington, and here in the park, they're an uncommon species. The general consensus has been we should spend a little more effort monitoring western toads because of their rarity in the park. A man holds a chirping western toad in the palm of his hand. There are approximately, I think it's seven known breeding populations. The most accessible place would be, you know, Tipsu Lake, which is right near a road. And it has the largest population, breeding population of toads at Tipsu compared to any of the other spots that we know of in the, in the park. Then we have the human impacts and the trail, which is literally right next to the lake in certain sections. Um, a lot of times uh, to find, especially the adult toads, is, um, is almost a happen chance kind of thing. They're a terrestrial species and they don't, they're not tied to water so much as compared to other, uh, some other amphibians that we have in the park. So you just don't see them as much. Um, but you can randomly come across one uh, when you're not looking, you know. Uh, typically it's uh, maybe in the evening you're hiking back on a trail and you'll just see one. Living things are fascinating and um, they're not simple. If you like mysteries, biology is one mystery after another. There's this whole giant world out there and, and we're, we're part of it but we're only one tiny little piece of it and there's all these other aspects to the to the living world. I like doing this work because it's yeah you're solving mysteries you're finding out little details about other living organisms it kind of it ties you to what's outside of you you know and I, I find it fascinating. What are these bigger tads in your Those brain? are the cascade okay. frogs. Okay, little small ones are the toads. Yeah, and they, oh. you know, so they're still embryos. They haven't, they're not even hatchling stage, but um, okay. cascade frog tadpoles, they're sort of rounded, the front of their, the head, and, and these guys are rounded. Toad tadpoles are more angular. It's kind of goes almost to a point and then it's flat in the front. Mm -hmm. The amphibian program, the citizen science uh, amphibian program we have, you get to see what it's like to be a field biologist. And you get to see things that uh, you might not see just as a regular visitor in the park. Along a trail, hikers walk. Caption Sarah Lindsay, citizen science coordinator. I am Sarah Lindsay and I am citizen science coordinator this summer, which means that I took volunteers out to do amphibian surveys of some of the lakes in the park, mainly the toad breeding sites. So there are um, a couple different ways that citizens can get involved with science at Mount Rainier. The program that I was involved with was the amphibian program. We were keeping track of amphibian populations in a couple lakes and wetlands around the park. So people who are interested in getting involved in that work um, could email me and I would organize um, in a survey where they could come out and help me put on waders, get a net, um, I have my data sheet, and we'd walk around the perimeter of a lake and sort of note anything that we see. Look at that thing! Aiden, look at that thing, that's Is huge. that the one I put in there? Yes! I have always been somewhat of a nature nerd, I would say. Growing up, I loved tromping around in the woods and looking for bugs and frogs and that type of stuff. So I think it appealed to the curious child in me. And um, 
I like working with people too, so it seemed like a good blend of being outside and working with people and getting excited about finding critters, which is a rare opportunity as an adult, I would say, um, in the workforce. So it was awesome for all those things. Volunteers, I would try to give them some background on the species we might find at each site and what each life stage would look like. Uh, maybe the tadpoles are growing legs, or maybe there's a salamander that looks kind of sickly. Um, we'll oh, write that in the notes okay. so that we can keep that information from year to year. I could look at a bunch of pictures in a book and get a pretty good idea, but nothing is the same as seeing it in the field, I think. I think that citizen science is an awesome way to increase engagement in our national parks. Very few people get to go kind of behind the scenes, I guess. So I think it's a really cool opportunity for people to get involved in some science in the park, which is, I mean, you can come to the park as a visitor and have no idea the kind of stuff that goes on behind the scenes, all the science that's going on. And so I think it's really cool to give people that opportunity. Amphibians are, like all animals, are sensitive to their environment. We have the data from like year after year and seeing how populations respond to various stimuli, like drought is a big one. And so I think giving people that context for why we, why do we care about the impact we have on these places and it's, it's a really cool way to, to see that. But honestly, this park is really A+, plus. so lots of great views, lots of great lakes. Sarah nods. Lakeside, a group of young people walk. A boy holds a fishing rod. Submerged in shallow water, a square net. In the net, a salamander moves. On the lake bed, a western toad. Over the surface of the lake, gentle ripples. Through the mottled water, a western toad. Tadpoles dart. Sarah writes data on data sheets. Sarah, holding a long net, wades through the water. Next to the lake, fir trees. Beyond the trees, the snow-covered peak of Mount Rainier. Against the black background, white lettering reads. For more information on citizen science at Mount Rainier, please contact Kevin Barker, Volunteer and Outreach Program Manager, 360-569-6567, Kevin underscore Barker at nps.gov or visit www.volunteer.gov. The arrowhead emblem of the National Park Service words read Mount Rainier National Park.